I'm supposed to be, we're supposed to be doing this now, aren't we? <laughs> All right, well, let's. Uh, That's our intro. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> YouTube comments. They are sadly a thing. They are sadly a thing, but we have been listening to them. Some of them, um, yes. The yes. ones that actually have a point. Well, not all of them do. There's, there's some good points that are being made. Um, you know, uh, recently increasing so, people have been noticing my impending baldness. That, <laughs> that's something that has been coming up in the comments. Thank you for everyone who's been And noticing been, uh, me that uh, I don't ever let you finish a sentence. Uh, has that been noticed? Yes. Oh, well, we could, we could talk about that in a bit. But no. uh, one of the things I, you know, we have noticed and, and listened to is people saying, when we talk about code, can we show some code? Yeah, well, that might be helpful. So Could be nice. We thought, like, We've, we've, we've got a, a camera and a, on a tech. We've got an iPad here with some code on it. So, tree shaking. Oh. So, let me guess. You're just doing this so we can put a nice buzzword in the title. Yes. yes. 12 things you didn't know about tree shaking. Oh, Number yeah. four will blow your mind. Class based tree shaking is Ooh. the title of this, I think. Oh. So, so, here we go. We've got, we've got a code example here. I'm importing a load of stuff. Plugging your own library, are we? It's, it's based on a true story. <laughs> <laughs> like all good stories are. Um, I'm importing a load of stuff. This file has a lot of stuff in it, but I'm only using two of them. And like modern tools like Rollup. Then and why are you Webpack, importing the other ones? Well, just to show that they're there. Yes, technically I wouldn't have to import them. I mean, commonly, I guess you would import this as import IDB keyval from like put it, all of them in an object. So you, have, you know? No, <laughs> no, you no, wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't I, I do, would that. do that. Good, because yeah, so in in this they like, each of these methods is individually exported. And that means that tools like Rollup and Webpack yep. can go, huh, you're only using two of these or three of these. And it goes, well, I'm just going to take the ones you're not using and delete them. And, and that's tree shaking. And that's tree shaking. And that's good. Well, because the tool can figure out what you're using. Because if you don't import them, you can't use them. That's, right. that's how modules work, right? Right. So like in, in, in the days where we would import jQuery, yeah. and you've got like 101 methods, and you're only using three of them, tough. You were taking the full weight okay. of jQuery. And with trace shaking, that's not true because you're only using the stuff you actually import and use. So yeah, this is great. This works fine. But I ran into this problem. So, so as I said, this is a library, real library. Uh, and someone said, well, it's all fine having you know set and get and all of these things, but mm -hmm. I want to create my own store with that doesn't clash with another store. And I was like, well, I know how this works. So I made it happen. Uh, and you know, so I thought, well, it, it could be like this, right? So. So you got now you're importing a store. Oh yeah, that's like that. The common like, you now wouldn't just hard code a thing, but you have to instantiate the whole thing first. And it knows all of its stuff about where the database connection is mm -hmm. and all of that, and, and it can go. But the problem is, classes can't be tree shooken. <laughs> I'm sure that's the right way of saying that. Oh, so okay, so you have a class. It's called store. Mm -hmm. In the constructor, as we can see here, it gets the backing store name, the IDB. What is it called? A store in IDB? Uh, yeah. Um, object store. And then the class obviously has all these methods, like get and set, but also the other ones we saw previously, like keys and whatever there was. Yep. OK, so, but if you don't use one of them, ideally you wouldn't load the code, right? But it's not statically analyzable in yeah. the same way a function mm -hmm. is. So, like, you know, here I'm using dot keys, but I'm not using like the delete method. I'm not using yep. the clear method. But it has no way of being sure about that because you know keys like this. It kind of looks like yeah, that's statically analyzable. But like there are many other ways. Yeah, that's what I meant. You can do very weird things. Right, exactly. So you can do it as a string, but that string could be like two strings added together, or it could be some sort of functional. If I something. ever see anyone writing code like in the last line, I will hunt <laughs> that person down. <laughs> but there are legitimate reasons to do that. Like you might have a series of uh, method names uh, and you want to append on to the start or remove Yeah, I've done that myself. Like some yeah. if you build your own little meta programming thing where you like generate event handles on the fly. Like this this can happen in real production code. This mm. is not you being stupid. This is this can happen. It can happen. And um, so my my uh, my question really is how do we solve this problem? And spoiler alert, I don't really have the answer. Um, but I've I've seen what other libraries have done and uh, and so like one example is um, th this this is a style of uh, RxJS. Mm. Uh, they used to, so the, so here we're importing the the store. So we've got our store. Uh, it doesn't have the keys method on it because that's let's say a less common method to call. Sure. Uh, but you import another JavaScript file, okay. which has the keys implementation in it. 
and that just mutates the prototype? It mutates the prototype, exactly. So this would be the implementation. I mean, it works. I totally get it. Yeah. I'm always wary when suddenly the order of imports matter. I feel yes. like that's a dangerous path to go down. And generally, like mutating the prototype is, I mean, it's been done for years. I'm not saying it's bad or stupid. It's just saying like, I, I, it feels dirty. It feels yep. like there should be a better solution. Absolutely. And, and, and part of the problem with this as well is if you import it but don't use it, tough. Because yep. that's not statically analyzable once True. again. Your roll up or web pack. So can't it tell. shifts the burden onto the developer rather than just being a tooling issue. Yeah, and it means mm -hmm. you end up doing this import for every method. Uh, it's the kind of long yeah. strings, it's a bit messy. So, yeah. Um, so, thinking about other ways of doing this, and there's a JavaScript proposal which I really like, that mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, called the bind operator. Yes, I remember the bind operator. So here we're importing store and the methods. So, store basically, just in this specific number, would Practically more or less be an empty class, right? There's not much in there. Exactly. And you will call it like this. So yeah. store, colon, colon, set. And that's essentially saying, call this set method as if it were an instance it's, of store. If you have a function in JavaScript, you can use dot call. You cannot just use parentheses to invoke it, but you can use dot call. And then you give it what should be this inside the function, like this. What yep. is this supposed to be? And yeah, here I have it. And, um, what the parameters are. So in the bind operator just says, take my left side as the this, and the right side just do a normal invocation. In this exactly. case, so the store of set function kind of thinks it's being called on store, even though it is there is no tight coupling between those two things. Exactly. So you use this just as you would in a class, uh, and this will refer to the store as it would within the class. And this can be tree shaken and all of that stuff. If you don't use it, it I've used yeah. this in Babel a couple of times, but I don't think it has shipped yet anywhere. No. And this makes me sad that it looks like the whole proposal is dead. Like oh, that's sad. That it does make me sad. Um, Do you know why? Well, because another proposal has started taking kind of caught people's attention okay. for doing a lot of the same stuff. And this is the direction that the RX folks have been looking at. Um, so same again, you import the store and the mm -hmm. separate methods. Like the same as before. But, ooh. Okay. So this is the pipeline operator. What's the um, difference? Well, so what this is saying is call, you know, take the right-hand side, mm -hmm. treat it as a function, okay. and pass the left-hand side to it and call it. So, so set right now is a function that you invoke, and it returns another function. Yeah, great, isn't it? Uh, so that's yes. So your implementation of set would look like this. Mm -hmm. So here we got a function which returns a function. The first one takes the key and the value, and the second one takes the store. I see. I mean, the ugliness is hidden, but it is ugly. Yeah, yeah. And this is the way the sort of RX folks are sort of lo looking at. Um, it's. I. I think it's okay. I think you're right. Like writing it is confusing. Uh, explaining yeah. to someone that. Oh, yeah, this is a function that returns a function. That's how it works. So I think I've seen this operator before, the exact same operator in F sharp. Yes. It works differently there, though, because there, basically, what is on the left-hand side will become the first argument of the function of the right-hand side. So in this case, it will become the first argument, but it will be like. But of the function it returns. Ah, oh, I, I see. I thought it would be basically injected in front of the other argument. So, so you don't have the necessity to, to create a new function first before you can start using this? So there is an alternate proposal uh, oh, okay. which, which looks like this. Here, you're using a question mark to say where store would be passed into. I see. And this is okay. sort of the, the hack style of it. So where is this at? Is this? So this is stage two. Uh, okay. th there are like two main competing proposals for the pipeline. And yep. then ha that has spawned like another 127. <laughs> Uh, variants of the two or one ways of trying to combine the two. So that's, yeah, it's very much kind of experimental, still discussing okay. the features land. But I, I keep I going bind back. Bag. Yeah, I keep going back to bind <laughs> for things which are instance methods. And I feel like even if this ships, I feel like I would end up going for something more like this. Oh, yeah, that's actually not too bad. Like where I, I have a do method that takes which legit just under the hood probably switches it around right which legitimately under the hood is just going to do yeah it's just going to it's take the first do one the arguments this exactly a. that and I like this pattern honestly because this this you can do you today and it would allow you to do the tree shaking 
Exactly. The downside to this pattern is um, I don't think it's possible with TypeScript. Um, which I know you shouldn't hold you back from JavaScript, but if why you're, not? Um, because the in in the dot do case, the second and third and to infinity arguments, their types are depend on the kind the thing. You of can the first do that, argument. but then then the type would have to know about all possible functions. Exactly. It's like they do with event listeners, where they define the type depending on the string value of the first argument, and then. Define so what the event type will be. So you can do that with a string. I don't know if you can do it with a, an object. You maybe can. Good question. I actually don't know. But it's definitely more complicated than it should be. So yeah, so that's that's the problem. As I say, that there's that is probably the best solution I've got, or just a function which will take the store object and or just Babel the bind it. operator. Or just Babel the bind operator. It's but still in there, the plugin still exists. Yeah, but to to go for something which is not going to be <laughs> You know, pursued in JavaScript, maybe. It feels like the wrong direction to go. I don't know. There, there are, there's one more proposal which is kind of just being talked about, which I kind of like. And it would be a way of having an instance and a declarative way of saying, um, it, take these extensions and apply it to this class, mm -hmm. but only in this scope. OK. And so it's a kind of way of, of you know. It's very specific to this problem then, though, because I feel like Absolutely. the bind operator would be a more powerful, generic, even the, like, or, or a better solution of the pipe operator would be a more generic, more powerful tool to have. And that is, yeah, that's my worry about it as well, is it's solving that specific problem, whereas bind solves that problem and lots of other problems. Yeah. So yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes. We've got hacks we can use in the meantime. Yeah. But uh, I just, I, yeah, I want bind or a way to do this in TypeScript, which might already be possible. And if so, someone should tell me in the comments. And uh, this is me farming off my work to other people. <laughs> should we introduce zero HTTP codes? <laughs> Negative what, HTTP what, codes. What, what if we reach 100? Oh. What do we do when we actually shoot HTTP 203?